I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you are going to learn something today because it's time for me to release another round of FPV receiver testing. I've got the LaForge V4. That's the new module from UBAD. I've got the SkyZone SkyO3 goggles. I've got the ClearView module for Fat Shark, and I've got the Achilles Pro firmware running on the Eosheen Pro 5.8 module. That's kind of the budget option here. A lot of these guys are a hundred bucks for the for the LaForge, two hundred plus. $70 for the clear view. Meanwhile, we've got this little $25 Eosheen Pro 5.8 module with a $10 piece of firmware on it. Can it even hold up? You're going to find out. No messing about, guys. We are going to get right into the results, and you'll finally be able to answer the question, is Clearview worth all that money? Uh, is, uh, is SkyZone any good compared to LaForge? Yeah, we'll answer all those questions. Let me give you a quick look at my test setup while I tell you a little bit of background about, like, for example, some of you guys are wondering, what about Trudy? Why is Trudy not in this testing? Uh, and the reason is that this te I've tested Trudy extensively against LaForge. I really feel like if you want to see that, you can go look at some of my older testing and see how it shakes out. Um, I can only test so many modules at once, and that's especially true in this test. You may recall I bought like a nine-way security camera DVR so I could test multiple modules at the same time. And there have been some questions raised about whether that DVR is affecting the results. So for this test, I've actually bought four individual screens and I'm going to be testing, I'm going to be recording the screens so we know that we're, we're recording exactly what the module is putting out to the screen and that there's not any kind of post-processing being done by the DVR. That is, I've just kind of dropped a little bit of a bomb there. What post-processing done by the DVR? Yeah, I'm still working on figuring out like whether that's really happening and if it's affecting the results. But in order to give you guys the best results possible, I changed my test setup here. And that's why I'm only testing four modules at once. So with that being said, let's dive in and test the results. Show the, re let's dive in. In this first test, the Clearview module has two Omni antennas. Everybody else has a, has a patch antenna and an Omni antenna operating in diversity mode. In addition to that, I have slowed the footage down by 50% because uh, it can go by a little bit quickly. Uh, I would recommend you try slowing it down even more using the little gear icon in the lower right if you're watching this on the YouTube web browser. I'm not sure you can do it on the mobile app, but a lot of times it can be hard to see all the screens at once and see who's breaking up, who's not breaking up, etc. As I fly away here, I am flying down the road away from the direction of the diversity antenna. So none of the other modules should be, I'm sorry, the patch antenna. None of the modules should be on the patch antenna. Uh, and I'm doing these little 360 turns to point the antenna away from the modules and, and occlude a little bit to help create uh, you know, some changes in signal strength. One of the things to keep in mind as you're watching the Clearview module is that Clearview does a really good job historically of presenting kind of a vaguely flyable signal. The average, everybody else can kind of come, come and go. So you'll get a clear picture and then nothing and clear picture and then nothing. Whereas if you look like right here, you can kind of see the shadows of the trees in the Clearview. It does a better job of kind of holding on uh, and be giving you a consistently poor, but at least there's something there, whereas everybody else kind of comes and goes entirely. So that's something to keep in mind. If you pick any single frame grab, you may find cases where other guys look better, but it's important to look at the, the, the totality of the experience as you're trying to decide which one's doing better. At this moment, I've, I've kind of landed. I'm in a bad zone and everybody, kind of everybody's dropping out. Now I'm starting to fly back towards the ground station and you'll start to see them come back in. Here's another good example of Clearview kind of giving you a consistent image uh, when you're at the edge of range, whereas other people are kind of coming and going with a rolling image. This is the exact same test, but now I'm going to fly 
in the direction that everybody's patch antenna is pointed. And since the clear view doesn't have a patch antenna, it's going to be at a disadvantage here. So this test will help show just how much the Clearview Magic algorithm is able to make up the, di the difference in raw signal strength that the other guys have. The other guys have a 10 dB patch and everybody has a 2 dB-ish Omni the TBS Triumph. Here we can see that the Clearview is really struggling to make up that difference in raw signal strength. I do think this is another good example though of how the Clearview picture stays stable and steady where everybody else is jumping around. At this, at this exact moment it is completely blacked out, but you can kind of see it come in. When there's anything there at all, it's very clear and steady and you can fly through it. Whereas the jumping and rolling that everybody else has is a little harder to fly through. And I, I kind of feel compelled to point that out because I think it's not necessarily obvious. If you're just looking at any individual frame, you may see the clear view doing worse, especially in this test where it's on a 2 dB antenna and everybody else is on a 10 dB antenna. And now we're coming back and we should see everybody start to sort of come back in as I get closer to the ground station. Now we're going to do a test where the clear view has the same antennas as everyone else. One patch antenna, one omni antenna. This is actually not how the clear view module is designed to be used. It's designed to be used with two of the same antennas. So its magic algorithm isn't going to be helping it as much. But especially in the second half of the test when we fly out towards the diversity antenna, it should give it more raw signal strength. Pay attention to whether you think the clear view is doing worse or better under this conditions. Uh, where it's forced to kind of just act like a regular diversity receiver. Iftron says that the Clearview module's just raw sensitivity is so good that it should still beat everybody else even when it doesn't have its magic algorithm with the same antennas. See what you think. I really pushed to fly as far away as I could in this particular test. Uh, I got a little braver than in the first test. So uh, there's some periods here where there's almost total dropout, and that's the periods where I'm furthest away, and therefore the periods where it's most interesting <laughs> who brings in a signal and who doesn't.
And now I'm starting to head back and you should start seeing the signal come back in. Now we're going to fly in the direction of the patch antenna. So we'll be on the main beam of the patch antennas and Clearview should be on equal footing with everyone else in, in terms of its raw signal strength. But again, it won't have the sort of magic Clearview algorithm, whatever that is, to, uh, to help give it an even bigger advantage. Let's see how it does. And now comes my least favorite part of this job, which is uh, summing things up and telling you who won. <laughs> no, uh, I've done enough of this testing to know that many of you guys are going to look at these results and really disagree with some things that look to me to be really obvious. So I'm not going to try to call a winner. I just I gathered the data and you can spend your own money how you like. I do think a lot of you are going to look at these results and not feel like Clearview is worth the huge price premium over like LaForge, which is one of the more expensive of the modules at over $100. And I've always said that, that Clearview, for the majority of pilots who don't fly under challenging conditions, you're not going to, number one, you may not even really see an advantage with Clearview. And number two, if there is an advantage, it's not going to be worth the price premium for you. 
Um, I, I do feel compelled uh, to point out that we, this is only one of the tests that we can do, that this was not a very challenging RF environment. We didn't have a lot of multipath and we didn't have a lot of interference. These are other tests that we could do on another day. Um, and, and those are environments where people talk about Clearview really excelling. Uh, especially racers seem to like it because they're constantly in a very challenging RF environment with lots of other pilots in the air. The, the data will tell. But in, if you're a typical freestyle pilot or you, you're flying by yourself or without many other pilots in the air, if you're not flying inside a big metal warehouse with lots of multipath or a car park, I think these results are pretty reflective of what you can expect to get. And you know, if somebody handed you a clear view, then you might say, oh yeah, that's pretty good. I like things about it. But if somebody asked you to pay out, you know, 200 and some odd dollars of your own money, yeah, many of you are going to be like, oh, what are you kidding me? I was really impressed with, you know what? No, <laughs> you got the results. You could look at them. You don't need me to tell you. You don't need me to. So, you know, sometimes I feel compelled as a reviewer to kind of interpret the results for you and help you sort of maybe see things that you might have missed. But you got it. Go back. Watch it as many times as you like. Watch it at full speed. Watch it at half speed. And when you're ready, then you decide which one you want to buy. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.